we're looking at grade 10 November 2016 paper 1 and it's a question on equations of motion a taxi is traveling at a speed of 25 meters per second when a traffic light 40 meters ahead changes to red define acceleration now we know the definition of acceleration is the rate at which velocity changes or the rate of change in velocity it takes the driver one second to react before he slams on the brakes. The taxi then stops within two seconds. So what that means is we have this driver who's driving at 25 meters per second and that is a constant speed. So he has this constant velocity of 25 meters per second. He sees this traffic light and it takes him one second to react. So there's a time period of one second that elapses here. Then at that point, he breaks. So at this point here, his initial velocity was 25. He's now braking, so that means he's got negative acceleration. And they tell us that he stops within two seconds. So his final velocity is zero within a time span of two seconds. And remember, at this point, we don't know if he manages to stop before the traffic light or after the traffic light. Is the velocity and acceleration of the braking taxi in the same direction as it moves towards the traffic light? Now, if we look at the velocity of the taxi, you can see that the taxi was traveling to the right. So even though it is braking, his velocity is, well, he started with a speed of 25 meters per second. He's slowing down, but he's still moving to the right. So we can say that his velocity was to the right. But when we have braking, whenever we see, they tell us about an object that is braking, uh, or a car that is braking. Braking means negative acceleration. It means acceleration is against motion. It means that the object is slowing down. So his acceleration would be to the left. He's slowing down against motion. So is the velocity and acceleration of the braking taxi in the same direction as it moves towards the traffic light? So the answer would be no. Given reason for the answer, our reason would be the velocity of the taxi is to the right, but the taxi is braking, so he has negative acceleration. Acceleration is to the left. Okay, so going on to the next question, calculate the distance the taxi travels during the reaction time. So we can see here the reaction time is one second and they want to know what distance does he cover in that time. Now when they give us constant velocity, we know we are allowed to use the equation v equals delta x over delta t and this is a special equation which we use for constant velocity. So his constant velocity is 25 and one second passes and that would give us delta x equals 25 meters. So now if we look at the sketch, that means in the reaction time he covered 25 meters. His original distance from the traffic light was 40. So when he starts breaking at this point, he has 40 minus 25 meters to cover. And that would be 15 meters. So if he can stop in 15 meters from the time when he starts braking, so this is the part where he is braking, his initial velocity is 25, we want to know when he stops, it, they say that he stops within 2 seconds, if we can work out how many meters it takes him to stop, we will be able to work out whether he stops at the traffic light or further than the traffic light or before the traffic light. And that is the next question. Will the taxi stop at the traffic light? So we said that our initial velocity of the taxi was 25. And we said that he stopped, his final is 0, within 2 seconds. So if we can calculate the distance or the displacement that he covers in that 2 seconds, we would be able to work out whether he stopped in time or not. So if I look at my data sheet and I look for an equation that has V initial, V final, delta T and delta X, we would find the equation delta X is equal to VI delta T plus half A delta T all squared. 
and if I look at this equation, this equation here requires us to have acceleration. So this would not be a good equation for us to use right now. But if we look further on the data sheet, we would find the equation delta x equals v final plus v initial all over 2 times delta t. And this looks better because it has each of these values which we have. So delta x is what we're looking for. We want to know how many meters it takes him to stop. His final we said is 0. His initial is 25. And delta t, they told us he stops in 2 seconds. And when we calculate this, we end up with 25 meters. So if I've got to look at the sketch again, this was his starting point, the taxi's starting point. And we know that the total distance to the traffic light was 40 meters. In the first one second, he already covered 25 meters. So if he wants to stop in time, he needs to stop in 15 meters. He needs to be able to stop. But we calculated that he will only stop, his final velocity will only reach zero after 25 meters. So there's 15 plus another 10. So he would only stop at that point. But the traffic light was here. So no, he will not stop in time. He will not stop at the traffic light. Okay, and going to the last question, they now ask us to draw a position versus time graph for the motion of the taxi. So the first thing we do whenever we are asked to sketch a graph is we give the graph a title. So we say position versus time. The second step is we need to have axes that are labeled. So on the y-axis we would have position and it's always labeled with the unit. So position in meters versus time in seconds. And now we need to look at the graph, sorry, look at the information. And they said that for the first one second he was traveling at a constant velocity. Remember, in the first one second he was traveling at a constant velocity and he covered 25 meters. Now for a position time graph, to show constant velocity, we use a straight line. So that means in the first second, this shape of a straight line indicates to us that the taxi was traveling at a constant velocity and the position was 25. He covered 25 meters in that one second. And if you think about this, your gradient, if I look at the gradient of this graph, the gradient we know from maths it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So the change in whatever is on our y-axis all over the change in the x-axis. And if you use the units, so if I use meters at the top for y and seconds, I would get meter per second. And so now we can conclude that the gradient of a position time graph is velocity. And remember, for the first second of his motion, he had constant velocity. So constant velocity would mean constant gradient. And we know that a straight line shows constant gradient. And that is why the shape of this line was a straight line. But for the next two seconds, he was braking. So he had accelerated motion. So he had negative acceleration. And when we have negative acceleration, then on a position time graph, we would get this shape, your, almost like your sad face parabola. So that means for the next two seconds, we would get that type of shape. And I would say that total was three seconds because the first second and then the two seconds. So in total, all this happened in three seconds. And he covered, we said another, we worked out that it took him 25 meters to stop. So the first 25 plus the second 25, his position at the end was 50 meters from his starting point. So let's go back to our sketch to just have a look. He first went 25 meters at constant velocity shown by that straight line. So whenever we have a position time graph to show constant velocity, we would show a straight line. And in the next two seconds, he had negative acceleration. So that is how we know we're going to get that curve, like your parabola, sad face parabola curve. And he would cover another 25 meters in that two seconds. So 25 plus the 25 that he covers 
would give us 50 meters and that is his ending position i hope you guys have found this video beneficial please like if you did subscribe so that you don't miss future videos and share this video with as many of your friends as you can so that more people can benefit from these lessons